Hey, everybody. Okay. Now, I think we're back. And we've got a session here that, well, I don't know if it's going to make you uncomfortable or not. I hope it does. Because that's how you grow. When you're in training, and if basketball practice is comfortable, it's too easy for you. And you're not growing. If you're a distance runner and you're out there and you run a mile, and if you run a mile day after day after day, then you can only run a mile. You have to start running that second mile. But that second mile, that first time out, is really uncomfortable. But eventually, two miles becomes a little bit easier to, to do. And so when we're talking about what's going on in the world, it may be uncomfortable. But the best way is to talk about it, not to hide from it, not to ignore it, but let's talk about it. And so what's been going on in the world, um, especially in our country, and even things here in Indiana, it reminded me of, of 2010. In two, 2010, uh, right around this time, I was driving back from Lincoln, Nebraska, which was the site of the USA Games that year. And when I say I was driving back, I was actually in the van with somebody else, Chris Akers. He was, on, he was one of our coaches that year, and he and I were driving back from Lincoln back to Indiana while the rest of the team flew. We drove back the equipment. Stretch in rural Nebraska. I'm not even sure where we were, Chris. Uh, Chris was speeding. Chris gets pulled over by a police officer. And I think Chris would admit he deserved a ticket. But the funny thing was, and the, well, I shouldn't say funny, but the thing, the best part of it was that he and I would then have an interesting, really deep conversation for the next couple of hours about that experience. I'm white being pulled over by a police officer is a little different for me. Chris is African American. And so we had this conversation about being pulled over to him is very different than me being pulled over in a very similar situation. And that conversation back then was uncomfortable for me because it was probably one of the very first times I had an open conversation with somebody else about race. Every time I talk to Chris after that, it's a little bit easier to talk about some things because Chris and I have a relationship now. And that's part of solving the problems in our world is creating these relationships in which we can have these sorts of conversations. If you look at Chris, Chris and I are very different in many ways. He's tall. I'm sure him, uh, maybe. Um, but most of the pe people will notice when they, if they were to look at us side by side, I'd come up to maybe his the top of my head would probably be right at his armpit, and he towers over me. Uh, he's when you when you were to talk with us, you find out that Chris is very outgoing, extroverted. Uh, there's probably not a stranger in the world that doesn't quickly become Chris's. It's me a little bit longer to make friends. I'm more reserved. I'm more quiet. Um, but the thing that we have in common, and over the years, we've got started with Special Olympics. Uh, our passion to serve our athletes uh, our passion to learn and to grow as individuals through this experience, through this movement of Special Olympics. And our conversation here today is, is intended to help all of us have a better understanding of what's happening so that we can make Special Olympics stronger and we can make our community stronger. So as we normally do, do I ask our group, 
Chris, my man. What's up, everybody? It's good to have you. With I am us, glad man. to I be here, it. and I'm glad I came in a little earlier because there's a few questions I have to ask you about some attire that you might have to wear later on in the summer. <laughs> uh, you're, you're catching on to and the, the, the meat purple hair? dress. Yes. I don't the meat dress. I have no idea what that'd be like. You know, I'd be afraid that dogs would chase me. It's, for it's days. Lady Gaga esque, I believe. Oh, oh, that's right. That's where. It, ah, okay, man. See, that's how unhip I am. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but maybe Chris, maybe we can get you to dye that beard of yours purple. Purple is my favorite color, so I don't have a problem with that. All right. Uh, and then I, again, I've told everybody, Chris, that this starts off as a conversation between you and I, but we quickly need them to, to feel free to jump in, ask questions. Um, that's how we all learn and gain, gain a, a better understanding for our role in our world right now. So, Chris, I mean, where do you want to start, man? Why, why are people so angry right now? Uh, let me, I, I can tell you that, um, so slavery started 403 years ago. 1617, and uh, they primarily, not all, but they primarily took uh, Africans from the, from the continent of Africa, brought them across the ocean to the United States, to Cuba, to lots of, lots of different places on here to, to essentially start a new land. So, so there was a whole section of people uh, treated way differently, treated rough, treated bad, treat, treated horribly. Uh, they, they took thousands of uh, men and women and put them in the bottom of ships uh, without water, without food, without clean air, with any, any, actually anything, and brought them across. So they started with 1,000. They might get here with 500. What happened to the other 500? Well, they didn't make it. They would die on the way here. They'd be sick, and then they wouldn't be able to keep them here. So what they would do if you got home and you had a bad banana, what would you do with that banana? You throw it away. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much how they treated people uh, back then during the, and I'm talking the slave times, right? This is when, again, a person was, a black person, I should say, was not a person. Now, not all slaves were black. Some people are gonna say, well, there were, there were white slaves. They were, they were typically called them indentured servants. And guess what? After a few years, they got to work off their debt, and then they were set free. Whereas the, the black slaves were not set free. Some of them tried to run. They cut their leg off. They cut their feet off, cut their hands off, that kind of thing. They mostly traded them. You know, big guy like me, when I was young, would go for lots and lots of money because I could move lots and lots of land, carry things, you know, protect them maybe. As I get older, like I have a gray beard now, my value would drop. My value would diminish, get lower, because I'm older now. I move a little slower, not, maybe not as strong. And so <clears throat> people will nowadays say the reason that black people are so mad or people of color are so mad is because of slavery. And even 403 years later, and I can explain to you why. So first of all, you guys hear about uh, the word race, right? And, and really when, when I grew up in the way my mom taught me was the race was the human race. All of us being equal, being the same. That's how you're supposed to think, Chris. I'm like, okay, I get that. But then she says, but please understand that you, son, are different. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm a human just like, you know, just like Johnny, just like Steve. And they go, yeah, but you, your skin makes you different than Johnny and Steve. Yes, they're your friends now, but they, they are not the same as you. The people in the world, the, the leaders, I guess, are not going to treat you the same. And again, it comes back, which is crazy to me, but it goes back to the mentality from 400 years ago, that these people are a little different not a lot different, a lot different than, than the rest of us. So as my mom is teaching me how to get along with people, when she talks about the word race, because you're gonna hear that word a lot in the news and on your social media and all that, 
race just means a, a certain type of people, right? Humans, a race. But along the 17th century, go figure, is when slavery is in this full, kind of full, full-fledged time, race became uh, different people. So then it became black Italians. They all they all got their kind of their own category. And then at some point, the Irish who just the white race, right? So then now there's the white race. There's uh, they call them Caucasian. That's like the the technical term. And then this, and then actually Australia, which is where it got got its own got its own designation, right? So Australian is people from on the on the island or the continent, excuse me, of Australia are considered their own race as well. Which which is interesting because they have pygmies there, and they have they have different delineations or different types of people there, but they're all in the same race. So it always makes me wonder what's the reason that we can't all be the same race, but we're not. And it is different, folks, athletes. It's different. It's different being a black American than it is being a white American. And I want you to think about that for a second because some of you don't even think about it. Like you just love everybody. I know uh, the, in Special Olympics, so in, my, in my Facebook today, my memories from uh, I think four or five years ago when, when Special Olympics uh, uh, summer games was on the first weekend in June was popping up today and it was making me smile. Matter of fact, I want to say it's when I got this shirt about six years ago. So don't judge me because I keep, because I keep all my shirts. I like them. And so, uh, you know, as I, as I look at those pictures, I'm like, man, it was a whole different time then, right? There, there we were smiling and slapping five and hugging each other and all that kind of stuff. And I don't I'm not sure if you slap five with anybody anymore in this current times and not just all the race and the black stuff that's going on, but COVID-19 and the coronavirus. Is, the, is slapping five over with, probably, with strangers, with people that are not in your, people that are not in your, your what they call your safety circle or your circle of trust, I think is what they call it. So how do you create a circle of trust? Jeff alluded to it earlier. Which, which I thought was pretty interesting. And he, he talked about the fact that, yeah, I was speeding in Nebraska, which as a black man, I should know I should not be doing. I really shouldn't speed anywhere. But like, I think there's some places that, that you learn that are just a little more dangerous than others. Uh, Nebraska being one of them. And I'm gonna speak on the fact that why I say that some places are a little more dangerous than others. But I, I was speeding and, and it's funny because there's a rule when you're driving while black. So I don't know if anybody ever heard of that term before, but there's a rule when you're driving by black, driving while black. If you're stopped by the police officers, have everything ready. Don't go in your pocket to get your wallet when he's walking up. Don't reach in the glove compartment when he's coming up. Have your hands visible when he's coming up because for some reason they're scared of us. When I say us, I don't mean the human race, I mean the black men, right? That's kind of, that's the reason that we're having this conversation is because of what's happened to specifically happened to black men, you know, o over, over the time. And, 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 and George Floyd's uh, murder was, was the, the match that, that struck uh, the dynamite that made the, made everything blow up. So uh, when, when we got stopped there in, in Nebraska, you know, I remember cause that bef before that Jeff was asleep just as comfortable and peaceful as he could be in the back packed in with all the luggage and everything. We're just riding down the street. And, and the next thing you know, bam, it's just like, it's just going. And he's like, well, why'd you act like that? What's the reason you act that way? And I go, man, out here in Nebraska, they'll put me under the jail. And that's exactly what I said. Not in the jail cell, under it. But what do you mean by that? Because they don't, they don't really like me. And guess what? I don't know if that guy liked me or not. Right? I just know that at that time for, uh, I don't know, how long ago was that? That was 10 years ago? 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. So, so, for, so for 397 years, they didn't like me. I felt like they didn't, at least not. And when I say they, I just mean the people that have hate in their heart. If you do not have hate in your heart, then I'm not talking about you. 
It's the people that have hate in their heart, the ones I'm talking about, all right? But there's also another piece to this that we'll get in here in a minute, and that's called uh, bias or your thoughts about things, right? And I, I, can, I can easily explain that, by the way. So as I'm talking about putting my hands where they're supposed to be and, and all of a sudden I have to talk a certain way and sit a certain way, and, 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 and you know what they used to say? They used to tell us not to look them in their eyes. So all you men out there, that's one of the first things you learn, right? Look a man in the eye, shake his hand. But they would tell us not to look in their eyes because it's intimidating. So what are you trying to say? Just because I'm looking a man in the eye like men are supposed to, it's intimidating. But what that comes down to is that uh, as, a, as a black man in America, you learn how to survive first then once you know how to survive and then you can live. So there's, there's like milestones in your life. Uh, when you get to be 16, you get to drive and you're like, man, I'm out here and I'm driving. And then you get stopped a hundred times driving while black. Then you get to be 21 and you go, huh, I made it through my teens. Holy cow. Because we know society is tough. I'm from some really tough neighborhoods in Indianapolis. Uh, when I got moved to Michigan for a while and it was a beautiful neighborhood, by the way. But, uh, you know, it's been some tough areas that I've been, I've been around and been in. Then when you make it to 33, you're like, okay, good, cool. I made it. Like, I, I made it out of that tough time. I'm supposed to be safer now. It doesn't get like that because at that point, you've now been the common, you fit the common criminal profile since you're about 16 years old, especially when you're my size and height. From there, from there as you get older, then things get a little more comfortable. Guess why? And Jeff hit it on the head in his first one minute of this conversation was because when people get to know you. That's one of the reasons I'm here today. If you look around, there's not a lot of black volunteers in Special Olympics. And it's because, it's because of things you learn when you're young. It's because of the systematic uh, uh, racism, the systematic uh, uh, biases that people uh, uh, receive and and all it comes down to all it comes down to is the fact is that we don't learn the same we don't learn the same as other folks because whoever was in charge didn't want us to learn the same as other folks and when we do then we're deemed dangerous and they start to erase us they start to eradicate us and that's not it's not as uh, visible as you think sometimes what happens is they they put us in certain neighborhoods they make our educational uh, system not as strong as others so that you can't you can't compete with other people because you don't know it's not as important to you because you have to survive right if survival is the first thing like all of you understand if survival is the first thing again you cannot live okay so when you're surviving school maybe it's not important maybe you know uh, 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 living in a better neighborhood is not important because you're going to be around people that are like-minded which sometimes is a very scary situation but that's what you're going to do because it's more comfortable. And that's essentially what people want to be, is we want to be comfortable. In America, aren't we supposed to be comfortable? Have you guys been watching television when you saw where the guy was going into Costco and the Costco employee that works for Costco says, my superiors, my boss says, you have to wear a mask to come into our store. And the guy says, I don't want to wear a mask. I'm an American citizen. I can do what I want to do. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm an American citizen too. But a lot of times when I was younger, I couldn't do what I want to do. Now I can. You know, again, I'm considered probably what, what most would call the safe guy. I'm safe. I'm black. I speak my mind. But you know me well enough that you know I'm not being super controversial or scary. I'm not scary anymore, which is pretty cool. Well, in, these, in this case, I'm not scary, right? In the world, I still am. I'm walking somewhere and somebody, you know, cl the lady clutches her purse a little tighter. Or, you know, or if I'm standing outside, she might, I might hear the doors lock if they're not already locked, that kind of stuff. I've had that my whole entire life. Getting on an elevator with somebody, whoa. Of course, these days, I don't know if it's being black or COVID, but either way, they're trying to get the heck out of the way. And, and, and you know, the, this is a, a stark reality that, that people face their entire life. Guys, uh, uh, some of you know, I have, I have three sons. And part, part of what they've learned growing up is that you got to be safe first, be nice, be gentle, 
be humble so that people trust you. And then once they, if then they trust you, they won't hurt you. And that's what it comes down to. When you have to teach young black men how to live in society is be humble, you know, be funny. And, you know, and Jeff, it's funny how, you know, Jeff just kind of sets the pins up and I just get to bowl them over, right? Chris never met a stranger. Heck no, nah, I don't want to meet a stranger because I want to live. I like breathing. <laughs> breathing. Breathing is the most important thing you do every single day, right? When I wake up, if I'm, here's a, here's a, here's a good example for you guys. If you wake up and you're not breathing, take care of that before you go to work or school or whatever you do. Breathe first, then go and do go throughout your day. Because that's what it comes down to. We all just want to breathe as long as we can. We want to be, we want to get old. We want to be grandparents. We want to, you know, we we want to be uh, those people that are mentors. You guys as leaders, you want to be mentors for the for the younger crew coming up. Right? And and the only way you become a mentor is if you're around a long time. And if systematically folks take you out because they don't want you to be around, they don't want the younger generation to learn, then we're just stuck and we're behind. And, and that's essentially what has happened. How cool is it now that, uh, you know, you, we have what's called allies in this racially tense situation right now. But I find it, I find it, Sometimes I find it difficult to, to fathom as, as a man of my age. I'm a, I'm a man of a certain age. And, and I think back to why did it take for George Floyd to get choked out and for us to see it? Because we've heard about people dying all, all throughout history. We've heard about it, right? We've even seen a few get beaten. We've seen a few people get killed. Maybe, maybe not directly, but indirectly. Philando Castile, you know, we, we were in the car with him. Uh, we were we were we were there when uh, uh, was it Mike Brown? We were there when uh, oh I'm, the other gentleman is, is slipping my mind. The, the first the first gentleman said I can't breathe. I'm, his his name is slipping my mind for some reason. But you know we we were there and 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 we've seen it a time and time again. But I think we attribute it to the fact that they were you know w one guy had a bad attitude uh, because he wondered why the police were bothering him. One guy was eating Skittles. You got, you, you know, I, we'll ask about his name here. He's a young fella. He went to the store. He, he's eating Skittles, and uh, a security guard just stops him and kills him. Right? Trayvon Martin. Other guys, Eric Garner, by the way. Thank you for, for who have put that out there for me. But, you know, it, when you think about these people, they, you get slightly nervous. And if you don't have the training, when the police are – a security guard or someone in charge come, you know, comes and talks to you, you get nervous and you say, Hey, I'm not doing anything. I mean, there was a young lady. She, her birthday was yesterday, right? She turned 27 yesterday. She was in her house, in her own house. The police did a, a check, a welfare check, welfare check, saw her and killed her in her own house. Brianna, was it Stuart? Brianna, right? Taylor, Taylor, wasn't it? Taylor, Brianna Taylor, sorry. And, and and they saw her in her own house and killed her. I, Chris, I, Chris, if I can ask you a question, then please do. Um, what's your view of law enforcement? I believe that law enforcement probably has the hardest job of anybody outside of uh, healthcare, um, because you know, every, in every situation, if there's something bad going to happen, we call them no matter how we feel about them. Right? You call the police and you say, hey, I want you to come. I need help. Somebody's scaring me. You know, I, just about a month ago, I, I, some guy came up on my porch. And listen to me. Some guy came on my porch, right? Some guy came on my porch and I called the police on. Now, there was a lot of things I could have done. There's some, I could have I took the situation and really escalated it, but I chose to call the police instead. Some random, some random guy. I think he was drunk. He was drunk, high, or crazy, one of those three things, right? And, and I, but he didn't need to be on my porch, and, and, and I called the police. So here's how I feel about him. I think, and I have family members, by the way, that have been officers for, man, nearly, nearly 30 years. No, not quite 30, but 25 years or so now. So I trust most of the police. You know, it's, it's not, this isn't a, this. I think you cut out there, Chris. Somebody, somebody muted me, it looks like. Oh. I'm back. 
uh, this this is a this is a person issue, and unfortunately, the police are the ones that just have a little extra power. So so how so are police safe? Yes, police are safe. Um, you know, are all police bad? No, not all police are not bad. Um, do do are they the ones that are in the line of fire per se? Yes, they are. They go to all the stuff that's bad. They don't they don't call. You know what? You know, as a as a as a behavioral clinician, that's what I do for a living, right? And so in my school and in my society where I work, that's what I do. I go to all the stuff that's bad. Every time somebody's having a problem, crying, fighting, anything, they call me to go handle it. So imagine if and, and all you do is they the same thing for police, except they have guns and other people have guns. I, I feel I feel sorry for the officer that was shot through the door going to you know going to check out a domestic violence situation. It's not fair, it's scary. And and so you can understand how their adrenaline is flowing. Imagine when you guys are getting ready, whatever sport you participate in, when you get at the beginning of it, when you start that adrenaline you feel, well that's the adrenaline they feel except it's a life and death situation every single time. So I wouldn't I would never be scared of the police. I would just I would just be courteous, you know, courteous and responsible so that I, since I know that they um you know, they're already at a, in a heightened sense. So, you know, even as a teenager or what have you, that's, that's the way I would handle it. And I'm not, so I'm not, I'm not down the police. I'm down the bad police and the bad, the bad leaders in the, in the communities that are around the, around the United States, not the good ones. Chris, you mind if you take a question or a comment here? Please. So I, I see the Galaxy S10. I don't know who that is. I think, is that Eric? Who's Galaxy S10? Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. I have a Galaxy oh. S10. Maybe that's one. Oh, sorry. Still sorry, Mike. That's you. No, sorry. So I had kind of have a, a comment, but a question. So the other day, a bunch of us were talking about um, all these people, um, I guess, protesting or whatever you want to call it, uh, down the streets and everything. Yeah. About you know, how Black Lives Matter, and but they had a bunch of cops and stuff walking with them. Yeah. So, and everybody's talking about how everybody's different. So what about, um, and it was brought to my attention, and it kind of made me think, what about if a bunch of Special Olympics people got together and did all that, how would they think about us doing it? Speaking from the heart here. Speaking from the heart, okay? What's your name, buddy? Mike. 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 Nice to meet you, Mike. Nice to meet um, you. Guess what? There, there wouldn't be this public outcry if if it was Special Olympics, Special Olympics Indiana marching down the street. There wouldn't be that. There people wouldn't be mad. People wouldn't be people wouldn't be scared. As a matter of fact, honestly, I think they I think they'd be. I think the 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 uh, the collective the collective thought would be, ah, oh, look at the Special Olympics walking down the street. Even though they're mad, look how it goes. But what about if you know people like us would join the riots today? What would people think? If you were doing what? And what about we, if we joined all the protesters that are walking down the streets today? I mean, people would still look at us differently. Well, I, I you know, I, I can tell you that I can tell you that if 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 part of your question is if you joined if you joined the the current state of affairs, it just it just makes it just makes the uh, message stronger. Is what happens is because. It, because it shows that the folks that are part of Special Olympics understand the plight of what's happening in America, and 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 to be, and to be totally honest with you, Mike, you know the the population that that the primary population of Special Olympics has has seen has endured some of what has happened with 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 black folks in America. And I mean, I don't I don't want to I don't want to keep that and say that, that doesn't happen because it does. Yeah, I understand that. I was just you know. To me, race is not a color. There's no color in race. It's, as we, we all cut ourselves. We all bleed the same color. We all breathe the same air. You know, I mean, we're all a family to me. I mean, I, I just, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, so, so Mike, here, here, uh, here, here's, 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 here's what happens here. We, I, I, I love the way you think because you're right. When I, mean, I talked about race, when, when, we first, when, when race was first kind of that word we first used it, was just about the human race, but unfortunately, uh, it has changed. Um, you know, Mike, you and I, you're 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 a handsome man and younger than me. 
but you and I are treated differently in society. There's no question about it. If both of us walk into um, a, a Meyer or what have you, any store, any store in America, the, the folks are watching me a little close, especially if our beards are the same. Like I told you, this white beard gives me a little bit of, the white beard gives me a little bit of leeway, but if my beard is the same color as yours, they're watching me and I felt it my entire life. Um, you know, it's different. Cause you're, look, you look to be a big guy too, but you're not as intimidating as me and only because you look like the ones that are in charge. No, nah, that's, that's ridiculous. Though. Thanks for thanks for chatting with us today, too. Hey, hey it's my it's, it's, it's uh, my pleasure. And and you know what? W while you're out there, take a look take a look around. Sometimes, I mean, that, I would invite you. I would invite you to to observe uh, your your situation compared to your to your black brothers and sisters around wherever you live. Okay, challenge accepted. All right, brother. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's let's go to H. H, you got okay. your hand up. My question is for Mike. Um, what do you feel about that Parker Nick situation? That what he did was right. That when he took a knee, the knee in, in football, do you feel it was right or wrong? So uh, I think the question was to someone else, but I, I, can I can I go ahead and answer? Mr. Yeah. Davis? H, H, this is his name is Chris. So I think you met Chris, right? You yeah, I mean to Chris. Go to Chris. Sorry, okay, Chris. And no problem, no problem. So uh, you know what, man? I was I was behind Kaepernick the entire time. I was with him. I understood what he was doing. He 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 took a knee because of because so, so he could try to bring light to the fact that there was police brutality, not against police, not against the flag, not against the United States, but specifically against police brutality and guess what he used his he used his platform which was a humongous platform right i mean right. outside of special olympics pro football is the best sports going on in the country right and so right. and so uh he, he he used that platform for that and i think the narrative or, or how it got how it got uh changed in society is what made it look bad and and then you know and it's funny because just yesterday roger goodell came out who is who is the ceo he's like jeff of nfl came out and said, oh, I can't believe we did this and we're so sorry. The only reason he did that, guys, is because of the protest. The, the pressure that they put on the leaders like Roger Goodell, who a, who's a, has a billion dollar organization, now they come out and say we were wrong. But when it was happening, they did not care. They did not mm -hmm. care. So, so Cap, Cap was right in what he was doing. And as a matter of fact, if anybody does, if people still get mad about that, he asked a veteran, First, because first he was sitting down, like sitting on the bench, and the veteran said, don't sit. If you're going to have a protest and draw attention, kneel. That's more respectful, and that's what he did. Right. Let's, Thanks for your question. No let's problem. Let's go to Jason. Jason's been waiting. Let's go to Jason. Mr. How Glenn. you doing, Chris? How you doing, buddy? Hey, I, I've gotten a chance to talk to you today. First of all, God bless you. Uh, thank you, thank you for thank you for having the courage to talk to us today. I'm sure this isn't easy for you. I have a question and then I have an offer. Okay. Do you believe that the administration of today, specifically President Trump, has a lot to do with the uproar that is currently happening? My personal opinion is if you were going to throw tear gas at people and, and pepper spray people and shoot bullets, rubber bullets at people, so that you can go to a church, you're an animal. You are yeah. not my leader. Jason, um, I, I appreciate you wanting to ask that question. It's since Special Olympics is hosting this, we're supposed to be a non-political organization. Um, I think what we're trying to do is figure out where, where we as individuals can help. And um, okay. I'm gonna- So let's go if, to my offer it, then. Yeah, let's go to your offer. Chris, I can't do it right now because of the pandemic. But I promise you that when this is all done and over, 
And I hope that the other athletes and even Special Olympics employees will join me. I think we need to walk. We need to walk arm in arm. We need to let people know that this is not okay. We want people to know that Special Olympics Indiana and Special Olympics International loves everyone. We are athletes and coaches and volunteers and staff of all races, all ethnic backgrounds. And, you know, I think it's time that if we, if we want to stay, truly take a stand, which I think we do, let's get walking. Jeff, would you be okay with that? Um, I, you know, it has to be an individual choice, Jason. Um, you know, the Special Olympics International Office has presented and distributed communication in regards to our stance. We're an organization of inclusion. We cannot ask for inclusion on behalf of people with intellectual disabilities while in the same breath or in that same action exclude others. We have to be an an organization that is accepting, that shows respect and dignity to all people, no matter differences or even similarities. to, to make a march like that, we, we are, for the most part, taking our cues from the international office. They haven't said anything in regards to doing those, uh, being, becoming part of the protests. But I certainly think that as athlete leaders, your leadership isn't a light switch. You don't turn it on and off. And your leadership seeps into all parts of your life. Therefore, if you choose as an individual that you want to make your voice heard or that you want to be part of these actions of protests, peaceful protests, then do so. That is your right. And we hope that as an organization through our athlete leadership program, we have given you the confidence to go out and do that and the sense of empowerment that you can make a difference in your community. Hey, I got some real quick. Chris? I got okay. some real quick, guys. Real quick. Did what Jeff just say make you feel something? Did it make you feel good, what he just said? Did it, did it empower you a little bit to make your own decision and, 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 and be asking your thoughts? Well, Jason, Definitely. To, to answer your first and question. I'll tell you what I'm also going to do. At the end of the call today, with your permission, I'm going to add you to Facebook. And I'd like to set something up soon. All right, no sweat, man. Hey, r- real quick, guys. If what, 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 what Jeff just showed you, Jason, answers your question. When you have a leader, the leader comes out, the leader st- says what he's supposed to say, and it makes sense for the people. It brings the people together, giving them a choice. And so that answers your first question, what Jeff, what Jeff just demonstrated, by the way. So go ahead, Jeff. You can move on. But, hey, good job, by the way. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah. Hey, hey thanks, uh, Chris, for taking my question. Uh, so my best friend is a black man. And the other day we were having a conversation about all of these protests. And I think I kind of made him upset without really meaning to, because I was, I was upset that there were people not the protesters, but there were people going around and destroying, you know, people's businesses and their cars and stuff. And it, it upset me and it scared me because I've never experienced something of this magnitude of a protest in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was a really new feeling for me. And I live in Indy, not too far from downtown where all of it was going on. Okay. Um, But I told him, you know, that I had a lot of sympathy for what he was going through and that I even worry about him. Um, You know, I don't want him to get pulled over and killed um, because that's a, that's a reality he lives with every day. And I guess I'm just trying to look for the words to say, to uh, assure him that I want to be part of the change too. And that I didn't mean to offend him uh, in any way. Mm -hmm. Man, you know what? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, uh, and, And I can tell you, the, the, the first thing you've done here is, is to say, I made a mistake and I do not know. So sit down with your friend, say what you just said to me. Hey man, listen, I do not know what to say to you. 
teach me teach me how to teach me how to be understanding teach me how to how to get along uh with, in, in the world how i feel because guess what you're going to have your opinion too and you're entitled to it everyone's entitled to their own opinion but if you want to understand your buddy's plight or kind of what's happening with him sit down with him explain to him uh plainly just like you just you were very eloquent right there when you just said that explain him that way and then have a talk with him and let him be frank let him be honest with you uh you be frank and honest with him and at the end of it since you guys are in the same circle of trust slap five hug it out whatever you need to do so that you both understand that you're in this fight together because i'm telling you what he needs you you know it's it's a situation where was it um the black population is only 13 percent of the united states so he needs you in order to make a difference in his life all right thank you you're welcome buddy thank you let's go to peggy and, and jennifer hoover and if i'm not mistaken i think i saw photos earlier this yeah. week <laughs> you got you guys were uh, downtown lafayette what were you doing down there you're pro helping the mom just wanted to go down to the protest on sunday very cool and see what it was she you didn't want to go by yourself so what what was it like was it it was very crowded people weren't supposed to just seen half pe half the people had masks on but a few of them didn't Mm -hmm. so we, stayed on the, we stayed on the fringes because of the social distancing and only stayed for about an hour so can i ask the Hoover family what was the reason besides besides kind of wanting to see what was going on what was it what was the reason or what did you get out of it when you were there oh <laughs> not really we have a few black friends, um, need to have more. And a new pastor in our church is a black lady, uh, very good. Um, so we go out to support her and all the, all the others. Uh, I'm also a member of our League of Women Voters locally, Greater Lafayette. So just try to do the support all around. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, I'm sure that the, the, the folks here in Indianapolis and in Lafayette appreciate the, 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 the allyship. I mean, again, that's what it takes. It takes, it takes all of us to come together for, for a common goal. And again, it's not, it's, it's, you know, I like how Special Olympics says inclusion. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for, we're looking for what's called equity, guys. It's just being fair, right? Just being fair and impartial. You want to have the same, you know, I want to have the same existence as uh as as uh, what's his name jeremiah i think that's next to me on my screen i want to have the same existence as him i want to be treated the same you know the same as him so to be as safe that's what it comes down to to be as safe if a policeman stops me don't get on my don't lean on my neck if i'm not fighting you but I, sorry i had a question is there any books or movies we, else we should watch wow great question peggy Great question. I tell you, there's um, uh, uh, Just Mercy is out right now. Um, it's a great, it's a great movie. And there's a, another cool one called The Hate You Give. Is a great movie uh, that's out right now. The Hate You Give. Some of you Tupac fans, if you think about Thug Life, that's where that came from. Thug Life, The Hate You Give, right? Thug. And then um, uh, uh, what is it called? White Fragility is a is a great book um for for folks to read it kind of just talks about um you know the the biases kind of points it out just and it's just it's just plain simple you know here, here's here's why we are the way we are that that, that kind of deal okay. so th those are those are three quick ones off the top of my head let's let's go to let's go to mike now mike hi uh, i'm mike with different Morgan county I've had a fight all my life for my rights. I have feel for all that's been happening in this world. I think we need to stand up with with the people so they their rights are 
are all in the same path as everyone else is. It's been a rough life for me. That's all I have. Thank you. Hey, hey, Mike, Mike, I appreciate that. You know, I'll tell you something. There was a, there was a time, there was a time in my life where I wouldn't even go to Morgan County because we were told as youngsters that that's a scary place for us going to was that Mooresville, Martinsville, and all that. It's like you black, you stay out of that area. Uh, then later on, I worked for a company that I had an office uh, in the middle of Martinsville, and I really enjoyed the folks that that worked for me and the work people that I work with. I liked them a lot. I enjoyed hanging out with them. And uh, what's that? What's that chicken place right there on the on the highway? It's really good. It's the, I don't forget the name of it, but it's really good chicken down there too. So uh, you know, thing, things are getting a little easier. Um, but Mike, I appreciate you from Morgan County, man. That's big. Chris, I I know I asked for forty five minutes, and we're at forty five minutes. Um, you want to take? One or two more, you, you, Jeff. Whenever you ask me, man, I give it to you. I already told you that. So I, what, I'm, having second, I'm having second thoughts about the purple beard, though. As I keep looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to uh, Nicholas Heron. Chris, uh, this is Nicholas. Uh, it speak for special Nicholas, but also I'm a member of GCPD, and we've been talking about this for the state and. We are there for anybody. Inclusive is the biggest word. It's come through our platform all week. And it's just sad. I've also a good friend with the gentleman from uh, Cathedral. He was a good friend of mine and just being there and just wanted to hear your thoughts from all that. Rest in peace, Chris Beatty. That's who you're talking about. Uh, Cathedral yes. alum and an IU football player. Um, and, and I tell you, man, it, it was tough. You know, he's only 38 years old. And, and from what I understand, he was out there trying to assist some of the younger folks that he knows and getting them, you know, so they weren't doing violent acts. And then he was gunned down. Um, uh, he was basically protecting, exactly. protecting young women is basically yeah. what he was doing. That's exactly right. And, and so I can tell you, man, in, 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 every, in every situation, there's going to be some folks that, that are, uh, for lack of a better term, ignorant in every situation. And, and unfortunately, he ran into some folks out there that were, that were not out there uh, protesting for the, for the right things. They were just causing trouble. If you, I mean, if you're going out there and you're shooting people that are protesting, then you're not, you're not out there for the right thing. And so it's just plain ignorance that took him out. Uh, you know, that's why, that's why we have to have more and more and more positive people in, in what I'm going to call a fight for, for, for justice and, and, and equity, right? Or, or uh, for, for us being, uh, being able to be treated the same for safety, for comfort. So, so yeah, so I mean, you know, please don't, please, I, I want people to understand that not everyone's good. Just like we, the question about the police, you know, they, they, they raise a lot of money for Special Olympics with the, the torch run and all that good stuff. And so they do, they do great work. But there's a few of them out of the thousands and thousands that are out there that are bad. There's a, you know what, there's, there's a few bad guys that do what I do for a living. There's a few bad CEOs like Jeff out there. There's a few, you know, there's, there's a few bad ones in every profession, which is unfortunate, right? But the more and more we come collectively, if we got Morgan County and, and, and folks in Indy and folks all over from where you got in Lafayette, if we're all on the same page, imagine how strong we are. And then, those, the folks that are being, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, goofy, we, we erase them out. There's not enough room for them to be around anymore. Well, thank you for the, thank you for the comments. It really makes it important across the whole state. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I'm sorry for your loss of your buddy, man. Thanks. Let's go to one, one last person. Let's go to um, Steve. Steve, you're next on my list here. Hey, Chris, how you doing? How's it going, buddy? Good. What do you think of all the rioting that's going on through the country? Well, I can tell you that the rioting is not going on through the country. It's going on through the whole entire world, in Spain, in France, in mm -hmm. Germany, uh, in Italy, in Australia. Um, it's, it's Belgium, Brazil. It's everywhere. And so uh, when... 
when you've been quiet, when you've been quiet for what seems to be about 400 years and a week, mm -hmm. right? You've been right. quiet about 400 years and a week, and then all of a sudden it just comes to a powder keg. And I think, I think what has happened is that people have been kind of in their homes for two months or three months, excuse me, and, mm -hmm. you know, and they've just been watching everything. And with social media, I mean, look at this. We're in a meeting all over the state of Indiana, and we're all at home, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. so with, with the, the way information is these days, we see and hear everything. And then we, we have a feeling about everything that we see, feel, and hear. So is it right, is it right to, to, you know, bust the windows and, and burn places up? No, it is not. Nope. It is not nope. right. It is not right. But the reason that it happens is because they're trying to get their attention. Uh, my man asked earlier about Colin Kaepernick. He tried to get your attention four years ago, and no one took him seriously. He was peaceful. He was quiet. He was mm -hmm. symbolic, and nobody paid attention. No one paid attention. All of a sudden, the NFL pays attention when buildings are getting burned down. They can't have fans in the games, right? All right. of us, all of us, love going to Colts games and probably Boilermaker games. For you, I love sports. And, yeah, and so we all love going to those games. And now we we can't go to those games, one because of COVID. And then guess what happens? What if that was happening and we were going there now? We wouldn't be able to go now because it'd be so uncomfortable. Maybe you don't right. go because it's uncomfortable. And so, mm -hmm. so when, when they start burning and pillaging and, and just tearing things up, I'm not pillaged, but when they start burning and, and breaking stuff and, and turning over cars, that got, that got folks' attention. So sometimes you, sometimes you have to flip a table, right? Sometimes you have to flip right. a table to get someone's attention, and they collectively flipped a big old table around the whole wide world, and it got people's attention. Right. Uh, I just want everybody to know, uh, Jason has been sending me a text message. He feels sorry about the question he was asking about the president. Um, Jason, there's no need to apologize. Hey, can, I, just, can, I, can I address that? Yeah, please. I, I'll address that. I, you know, hey, Jason, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really clear. I want to be very, very clear um, with you. You, you. Your question was poignant. This just isn't the platform. Here's what happened. Um, if there, if if our leader was a leader like your like the Special Olympics leader, this was my this is my direct point. If he came out and made people calm, stay within the policy, and made sure he just showed that he was a leader and tried to bring unity to the to the United States, then none of this probably would have happened. So mm -hmm. that's that's a directly answer to your question. You, you we have to have leadership that's not afraid to take leadership. And you, and yeah, you can say they're good. There's good on both sides. But you have to show it, and so far he has not shown that. So I don't mind. I don't mind uh, uh, saying that you have leaders like like Jeff and 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 uh, uh, Mr. Shriver and some of those others that that you know that are are fair and impartial. Remember we talked about equity. That's what's important, and what we haven't seen is equity at the top, Jason. So don't don't feel bad about your question. Jeff's doing his his official job, which he's supposed to do, and unfortunately for him, he has to do it all the time. Because isn't today Saturday? With this COVID yeah. stuff, I forgot. I don't even know what day it is sometimes. But you know, he's he's, he's the president. He's the president. He's the president and CEO of Special Olympics all the time. So he doesn't get off for that. Well, I, got, I got a question, Jeff, real quick. Sure. There's sure. a Christina McDougal. Maybe she looks upset. I would like I would like her to to ask questions if she has them because I don't I don't want her to leave this thing upset. Mm. Oh, she's not upset. Yeah. She's not upset, Dad. No, no. Okay. 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 All right. Christina has cerebral palsy. Okay. I just want to make sure. One of the things with cerebral palsy, when you're talking about difficult conversations that evoke a lot of emotion, it amplifies. So, hey. yeah. Hey, Christina. Then, Christina, can I tell you that even though I look calm right here, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm soaking wet down, like from my chin down. I'm soaking mm -hmm. wet. So I feel that. Hey, I feel you, girl. <laughs> All right. Well, Christina, I, it wasn't my intent to make you cry. Um, I think it was our intent to get everybody to think, uh, to show a little bit of compassion, to have a, b a better understanding of what's taking place, to get a perspective that we don't have because we, we all are, grew up differently. I grew up differently than Chris. I grew, I grew up differently than all of you. Um, and hopefully, 
we all learned a little bit today. And I, I, I and, think that's a good thing though, Jeff, because when everybody thinks about these difficult conversations, these difficult feelings, that I wouldn't be surprised if there aren't a lot of our athletes that they may not be showing it that, like Chris is, but it does upset them. It gives you pause for thought. Yeah. And, and it's, it's my role. It's my responsibility to, to make sure that we have these open conversations. Shame on me if this is the last one that we have, even if things um, kind of quote unquote, go back to normal, whatever that might be. Uh, we still need to talk. We still need to have these sorts of conversations to make sure that we as an organization do our part. Uh, we, we as an organization make sure that we don't add to the problems, that we help be, be part of the solution, um, that we make sure that all of our members who participate, whether volunteers or athletes, feel welcome and accepted. Um, and I'm sure that Chris will cannot wait to see each and every one of you a year from now when we're all back together at summer games and you'll see Chris out at Gibson track as he helps us with the track and field competition. Um, I, I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you for your time today. It was, it was a good initial conversation. And like I said, we, we need to keep having these sorts of conversations for, for a good long while, if not for the rest of Special Olympics existence as an organization. That's what we've been called to do. Right. Hey, Jeff, I, I appreciate you asking me to be here, man. And I will say that some, some of you kind of struck me when you said, you know, when things go back to normal. My hope is that they don't go back to the normal we knew. I think they go back to what they call the new normal. And it's not just COVID, COVID new, but it's, it's uh, uh, race relations new, uh, systematic racism new, uh, uh, police brutality new. Um, you know, I hope it goes back to those, that kind of new stuff too. Not just so that when they say new normal, it encompasses all of the things that we've been that, that have gone on right now. Don't just wash your hands. Say something to your buddy too, and re, re, reach out to your fellow man. Um, let me let me end with this. One of the great things about Chris is that he likes to rock cool socks. For sure. And a couple of years ago, he got me hooked on cool socks. And Chris, I don't wear anything but cool socks. So I've got my cool socks on here from Gibson County Special Olympics. Yes. And I yes. always wear my cool socks and in honor of Chris Akers. So I, if there's nothing else that we do, I ask that all of us rock some cool socks in honor of Chris. I appreciate that, my man. I, I will show you mine, but I'm not as limber as you. I can't get my limber. <laughs> get my screen All like right. That. Well, let's, let's show Chris our appreciation for joining us today. Um, I appreciate your openness and your honesty and all that you offer here and every time you come out and, and volunteer with us, Chris. We love you. It's, it's, my, it's my favorite thing. If you look right there, it's my picture of the, the team when we went to Nebraska. Yeah. It's, on my, it's on my shelf right there. It's, so. it's the long one there. Yeah, it is. It's the long one. That's, that is from Nebraska. All right, let's take a couple minutes break. Let's take about a five minute break. Um, and then we'll come back and talk about Alps University and our plans for the fall. Thanks again, Chris. Love you, man. Love you too, guys. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Bye, Thanks, Chris. Chris. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Thank you too. I'll see you, I'll Thank see you, you so much, Chris. You're welcome, you, buddy. Chris. You're welcome. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Jenna. 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 Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Well, that helped we'll out a whole lot. Oh, yeah. Hey, I appreciate yeah, you, man. What's up? What's up, Thank man? you very much.